Welcome back to Vishal Hussain Meets with my guest today, professional cricketer and captain of the Pakistan women's team, Sana Mir. I'm intrigued, Sana, by what your family have been like as they watch you on this pretty unusual course. Uh, they have been really supportive. It's because of them that I'm sitting in front of you today because my father, he has been a great support. One, when I went in 2005, I went into NAST, uh, one of the best in, uh, engineering college in, uh, colleges in Pakistan. I've to been study engineering as your degree course. As, yeah, he got me into it and um, like I've been working really hard to get the merit and the numbers and things like that. And when I actually went into NAST, then I had to balance with my cricket because I wanted to play cricket and I was not selected in any team at that moment. There was a team getting made up in Pakistan, I knew about it, that was it. I, I was nowhere, but uh, one thing I knew that I wanted to play cricket and doing an engineering degree in Pakistan and balancing it with cricket is not that uh, easy because the credit hours are not given and the, uh, you have to have 75% attendance and things like that. Course. It's a tough, it's tough and it's, you don't have much support uh, in the educational systems. That is what I've been talking a lot about in Pakistan. But um, at that point, my father said that we have got hundreds, thousands of engineers in Pakistan, but we have got very few women cricketers. So just go and uh, just uh, live your dream. And that was uh, a point when I was unable to decide of, because of the pressures that I have to study well, I have to do well. I didn't know about my future in cricket. But that I needed that push and he gave me that push. And my mom, she has always been like giving priority to my thing that I have to go to the gym. I never have had any responsibility of working at the house, helping her, anything like that. I never had that. She has always preferred uh, my uh, like the things I want to do. And my brother, he was nine years older to me, so he used to take me out with this, on the street with, and let me play with his friends. So that was also. And during your university course, that was the moment where you had one of these important choices to make in your life, whether Sana should continue with her degree or devote herself to cricket. They were not very interested that we are taking the college off to play an international event because we were not producing results. Now things have changed for a lot of girls now and I'm really happy for that. Studying in universities on the basis of cricket and other sports as well, now this thing is growing. At least uh, now the future of Pakistan, the next generation is getting, like girls who are uh, taking up cricket now, they can continue both the things. Sanami, does it annoy you that the men get so much more attention? You know, they're better paid, they get the sponsorship, uh, they have this huge following. Sometimes I do, but uh, but things are getting better because uh, we don't have enough sponsors. We don't have international cricket in Pakistan. That is the main reason we cannot yeah. have the climate. The climate is such that no, the international team, teams can't play. No, no, the, the climate is perfect, but uh, well, the climate is perceived as such. That yeah, international the, teams can't yeah. Play. So, but the, uh, but obviously, a little about the security conditions. Not many teams are coming in Pakistan, so the women team is not getting a lot of uh, funds collected. So all the uh, funds that have been collected by the men's cricket are being basically used up for women's cricket as well. So the limited resources we have got on the PCB, they are giving us quite a, uh, good, quite good facilities and uh, supporting as well. How did you feel when you saw that scandal erupt in the UK involving the, the three men cricketers from, from the Pakistan team? Uh, first of all, it was really disappointing. We were all hurt as Pakistanis that because as, as a cricketer, as a sportsman, you are the ambassador to the whole country and our country is not like that. So we were disappointed that few uh, number of like individuals, one or two, have uh, done such a thing. And the uh, thing is, this thing has been going on in different, with different players in the past, but it was a good wake-up call for everyone, the Pakistanis and for the whole world, that this is not good for the game and this can damage the game. And uh, I think it was a good wake-up wake call. I mean, you know what it's like to captain a team. Do you think when something like that happens in a team, you know, God forbid it happened on your team, would you see it as a, as a failure of leadership? Obviously, it, it, it can be a failure of leadership because you have to be well connected with your players. Like, uh, 
like in our team, the women's side, we we know who is coming up to meet the girls, at what time they are going out. We usually travel in groups, so uh, it is very rare chance that someone individual approaches the team and we have got our managers with it. The, the whole system is there. But I wonder whether that's more because you're a women's team and, and perhaps you stick together more than the men did. I think this happens in every, like, this can happen to any team. This was Pakistan and the players didn't uh, do the right thing, they didn't make the right choice and they have been punished for that. And this should not happen ever again. And that is the only thing I would say because uh, more, uh, I think more steps should be taken to make it uh, impossible for the players to do such a thing. They should be obviously aware and the, the investigation or the inquiry system should be more effective. Do you think it has affected you in any way in the sense, you know, you, you said it was disappointing for all Pakistanis, but I wonder if it's tarnished um, the name of Pakistan's cricketers, men or women? I think it, for me, it gave me more courage, for, for more strength, that now I, we have to do something to bring the name back. And it was after, I think, six, seven months that we uh, won the Asian gold medal. So we cannot change what an individual has done. That, is, that was his choice, not Pakistan's choice. What we have to do is try to get back and just try to do what we are good at and be honest with our jobs. Do you ever feel that you have a a really big responsibility as a, at a young age. Does it does ever, ever feel like there's too much weight on your shoulders? Uh, there is a big responsibility, but I enjoy it. I've been like dreaming for it, to represent Pakistan and represent it well and uh, show that Pakistanis are honest people. They can do hard work. This team, we don't have the same facilities as the women cricketers of England, Australia, India even. We don't have those facilities, but the results we are producing, we are now number six in the world. And the results we are producing is because of the hard work and dedication of these girls. And we have got a lot of people like that in Pakistan. So do you see yourself as a mentor to the, to the younger women on the team? Yes. Well, time to involve everyone. Please raise your hands if you have a question for Sana Mir and we'll, um, gentlemen here, and then we'll come to the, to the lady here. Yes, good morning, Ms. Uh, Ms. Mir. I have a question, and you touched on it. Um, the incident uh, outside the Gaddafi Stadium in Lahore three years ago, which resulted in the isolation of Pakistan on the international cricket scene. Uh, how is that impacting on the development of the ladies' game in the country, and how do you think you can overcome some of the obstacles that that has presented to you? Uh, yes, it has uh, been really damaging for the women's team as well, because uh, before like 2010, we even had few games internationally because of the budget constraints. We, we used to go out, but one or two tours. But we used to host country, like we had an Asia Cup in 2005, and India and Sri Lanka came to Pakistan for a women's Asia Cup. So that kind of uh, thing has been taken away, that we are not able to uh, play at the home series. We and does that affect, that affects the morale of the team? Does, and I presume it also affects, you know, television coverage and, and all the other elements that you Obviously, need. Obviously, like, uh, for cricketers, we have to be on the ground to feel like cricketers. We cannot feel a cricketer in the gym. That's not it. We have to be in the center playing a good uh, team. A good team, and uh, especially the whole environment. We miss the home uh, environment, like the crowd cheering for us, giving us the support. That energy we miss a lot. Okay. Question here. Sana, uh, tell me a little bit about how do you deal with the challenges of uh, people uh, critiquing uh, women. Uh, in Pakistan from a Muslim perspective and how do you go around um, maybe countering that image or, or balancing that view? I think playing cricket doesn't make me a lesser Muslim and we have never faced a challenge like that. No one has ever, I've been playing cricket for like when I was a kid and there was no single incident that personally I would tell you that someone came and said that this is not Islamic, we are doing, you cannot do this. These are all perceptions. And as a team in Pakistan, we never had that issue. As a Muslim, I've like uh, this has helped me uh, in my cricket because I was punctual, I was organized. As a Muslim, you have to be organized. You have to wake up early in the morning to pray if you are a practicing Muslim. If you if you are a Muslim, you have to have equality. That is something that uh, helps me in my leadership. If I'm equal to my uh, to all the players, that has helped me as a Muslim. So it has helped me being a Muslim when I'm playing cricket. Yeah. Okay. Question over here, sir. 
Uh, Sana, you have cricket matches and then you have India-Pakistan cricket matches. <laughs> no, I, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, given the history of these two countries, when you when you play against India, you know, whether there's this uh, added responsibility and added burden of history. Uh, I would say there's added aggression, obviously, <laughs> on the field when we are playing against India. And yes, uh, that the whole feeling is different. I cannot explain it in words, but yes, we've got a really intense match inside when we are on on the ground. But the moment we come out, yeah, we have got, I've got really good friends uh, on the Indian team as well. So uh, it has been a really good, great experience knowing the Indians because the first international tour I did was to India. And I just love being there. Uh, they were really good hosts and we had a really good time there. But when you feel the frenzy that the crowd is in for an India-Pakistan game, yeah, how, how does that feel if you're standing on the pitch? Is it not a bit overwhelming, frightening even? <laughs> no, I think it, it makes us excited more, more excited on the field. And I think it gets uh, the whole energy, uh, the whole energy of the crowd is getting into us and we just are more intense inside. And Sana, we're almost out of time, but before we close, you've crossed many obstacles in your life at a relatively young age. What is it that you would say really drives you? I think the love of my country, because, and the love of cricket, the both have mixed together and there have been a lot of obstacles in my way, uh, different obstacles, not only uh, because I was a Pakistani or I was a girl or I was like, in every person's career, in your career, and everyone who's sitting here, we face a lot of challenge. But when there's a motivation behind it, that you have to do something for the country or something for your own self, then I think that gives you a lot of motivation, and uh, that has been my story. Hassan Amir, thank you very much uh, for joining me today. You've been watching Michelle Hussein Meets. Next time, the Singaporean film director, Eric Koo. Till then, goodbye. <laughs>